This is Shelley Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the Bio CEO and Investor Conference 2018 in New York City. I have with me Dr. Daniel Alcon, the President and Chief Science Officer of Neurotrope Bioscience Inc. It's a publicly traded company, and the symbol is N T R P. Welcome to SNN Live. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks for having me on. Good morning. It's good to have you. Let's get started with an overview of the company, if you would. Neurotrope uh, was formed originally uh, as a subsidiary of, or as a relationship partner uh, with the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. Uh, the Rockefellers had invited me to start a new institute called the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute after I came out of the NIH uh, running programs on molecular mechanisms of, of memory storage. We took those mechanisms and started to develop potential targets for Alzheimer's disease because Alzheimer's disease is the only dementia that can present as pure recent memory loss. From that, we developed a drug called bryostatin, which is not a statin, but it turned out to be uh, safe at certain concentration levels, supplied by the National Cancer Institute, and we started seeing very good progress with a variety of neurodegenerative models, including transgenic Alzheimer's mice, stroke, fragile X, et cetera. From the work that we did there, we then started with phase 2A and compassionate use trials, where we looked at very advanced patients, and we saw really surprising improvement in these compassionate use patients uh, that lasted for some weeks. And we, from that, we took a, a, a plan to the FDA to do a phase two trial for advanced Alzheimer's disease. And I, I want to stress the, that the space itself of Alzheimer's disease is un unfortunately a space very, very difficult because it has not yielded any drugs to actually treat the disease. There are a few drugs that provide mild symptomatic relief, but the FDA has not approved any drug to actually treat the underlying disease or its consequences. Let's get into the history and the birth of the drug, if you would. The history began with our uh, multidisciplinary team at the NIH looking at molecular mechanisms of associative memory, which is most relevant for human memory. We developed a whole pathway, a kind of map of biochemical changes that then lead to structural changes, even synaptic structural changes. Those encouraged us to go after diseases of memory, disorders of memory that could be produced by Alzheimer's disease, stroke, fragile X mental retardation, traumatic brain injury. From there, doing extensive preclinical studies, um, looking at synaptic regeneration, using electron microscopic reconstruction, we could see dramatic improvement, not only in the cognitive functions of the animal models, but in the return of the synaptic networks, essentially regenerating the wiring that had been lost. That encouraged us to go to drugs that would be usable in humans. Our first compound, our lead compound, bryostatin, which is not a statin, turned out to be effective in animal models. And then we did phase 2A studies and subsequent phase two trials on advanced Alzheimer's disease patients. I might emphasize that in this space, there are no drugs that really have been effective for treating any of these Alzheimer patients, even early, but certainly not severe, and no drugs that have been approved by the FDA for actually disease modification or dealing with the consequences of degeneration of Alzheimer's or other kinds of degeneration. Let me ask you a question. In terms of the treatment, by the FDA, because of the lack of drugs and treatments, obviously no cure, what level of, uh, are you orphan status? I mean, are you fast tracked? I mean, do you have any of those categories? We do have orphan status for one of the indications, Fragile X, which I can tell you about. For Alzheimer's disease, we are approaching the FDA with our new phase two trial data to see exactly what uh, advanced status we can achieve from them, and, and we believe that we have good possibilities of being uh, fast-tracked in some way, because the data that we are ha uh, receiving and we have just finished analyzing show a level of improvement, sustained improvement in advanced Alzheimer patients compared to placebo that has never been seen before in the industry. And Where are you doing the trials? We've done these trials in, in 26 different hospital centers across the nation, um, uh, and in those, those uh, studies, we saw this sustained improvement, not only during the time of the dosing of the drug, 
the first 11, 12 weeks. But even 30 days later, after all drug was over, we saw improvement and even more improvement. That was consistent with our mechanism of action, which is synaptic network regeneration. It wouldn't actually uh, expect to be occurring to see some neuropharmacologic or antibody approach to cause something that lasted 30 days after all drug. We think that's also a first. And potentially this will guide us in our next confirmatory trial, which will start in a few months within the first half of this year, uh, where we will simply replicate exactly what we've already done and extend it out to 30 weeks or so. Is that considered a phase three? And let me. Let's get into some of the targeted indications at the same time. Well, it, it would still be considered a phase two. We hope that with, if we repeat, repeat this data with increased power, with more patience, with focus on exactly the right conditions, that the FDA will be very, and the world will be favorably impressed with the potential, and we'll see what is designated in the future and what's required. Um, we, I, I don't think we can anticipate now exactly how it will be considered. It's 2018. Why has it taken so long for this breakthrough in Alzheimer's and et cetera? Well, I think you have to th uh, consider what we're talking about. If the brain is considered a complicated computer, if you put your hand and ripped out the wiring of the computer, how would you replace it? How would you uh, improve it? It's, it's an overwhelming challenge. And now we have an analogous challenge in human brains. We have diseases such as Alzheimer's, such as the bullet that uh, went into Congressman Giffords. We have diseases and situations which are devastating and which are basically ripping out the wiring of the human brain. And we came across this from a really long pathway looking at biochemical mechanisms of memory and eventually we came to the actual pathways that could restore the wiring. We didn't anticipate it. It was kind of like an aha moment about 11 or 12 years ago. And that aha moment has translated into uh, more and more uh, productive ben benefits and now into human trials, which we're really excited about. What's your background? Uh, originally, I'm a physician and also a biophysicist. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to uh, have that orientation toward medicine, toward bringing benefits to patients, but also sophisticated biochemistry and biophysics to look at a molecular level, to, to develop something that would really make a difference at the most molecular basic level that might really help patients for many years. So tell me, do you have any recent news you'd like to share? Well, we're, we're uh, very excited about our complete uh, downloading of our data from phase two trial. We only had done it about five or 10% six months ago, but now we have the comprehensive data and this has allowed us to really look deeply into the data and see the benefits. Um, and the, the benefits look very encouraging. But that's just been the last several weeks. Let's get your website out there for more information for our investor audience, if you would. So it's neurotropebioscience.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Daniel Alcon from Neurotrope Bioscience, Inc. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is NTRP. I'm Shelley Kraft. This is SNN Live, and we're coming to you live from the Bio CEO and Investor Conference 2018 in New York City. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, on. Thank you, Shelley, for having me. My pleasure.